Hey guys, how's it going? So in this tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to calculate and plot the band structure of the silicon bulk crystal using the Ripper module of Turbomole. And the procedure is actually pretty general. So basically you can also use it to calculate and plot the band structure of any bulk material in general. So the three main things that you need to plot the band structure are the atomic coordinates, the lattice information for the silicon diamond crystal structure that is the um, case study for this tutorial and finally the high symmetry um, k points so from my previous tutorial on uh, periodic dft calculation with dripper you already know how to get the atomic coordinates and lattice information for the uh, for you know any uh, crystal or material within the materials project database but in this tutorial, we will, you will also learn how to get the high symmetry points for the band structure calculation. And essentially, we will be using this particular, um, you know, material within the materials project database. So it is the silicon in the cubic phase with the space group FD-3M. And it has the material IDMP149. And essentially, it is the... Uh, diamond cubic uh, structure of silicon with an FCC lattice, so a face centered lattice. And we will try and we will be trying to um, reproduce a band structure such as this one. So the band structures within the materials project database are actually calculated using the PBE GGA functional. So if you click on here, then you can go to the, their documentation and see that they used um, GGA PBE functional somewhere. Uh, I guess somewhere, 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 somewhere they had this information. Yeah, okay, so here. So they say that they use GGAPBE for the band structures and GGA plus U for the DOS or something like that. So, anyways, coming back. So, yeah, okay, so let's um, begin our work. So first of all, we will be using this uh, Ripper Tools web app that I also showed in my previous tutorial. And we will be going to this utility here that is called the Materials Project to Ripper Utility. And then we will be trying to get the primitive cell for this particular material that is MP149 using this uh, utility. So you can either search uh, you know, for it using the formula. So the formula would be SI simply. But alternatively, since we already know the material ID, we can also click on material ID here and then search for MP-149 and then press enter. And we will soon find this material over here. So you can see that it has a band gap of 0.61 electron volts, cubic crystal symbol, you know, it is stable and it is not a metal as it is a semiconductor. And then yes, we will be choosing the primitive cell. Although you will notice that the primitive cell actually looks quite different than the conventional cell. <clears throat> but it is very important that you remember that whenever you are, you know, calculating the band structures, you should always use the primitive cell because otherwise you will get band folding artifacts in your band structure. And in case of silicon, it is very interesting that if you use the conventional unit cell to plot the band structure, then sometimes you get you know a direct uh, gap semiconductor or a, a band structure rather than uh, what it actually is and that is indirect band um, gap semiconductor so okay so yeah so here you see the primitive cell and what you're going to do next is you're going to download the primitive unit cell SIF file so SIF stands for a crystallographic information file so okay it is downloaded by the name of primitive unit cell 9 now what you're going to do next is you are going to head over to this band structure path utility and also let me just go ahead and make it bigger so here you are going to you know click over here to go to the browse files and then you can upload this uh, primitive cell sif file and then uh, you will also in this utility you know notice this convert to primitive cell functionality although at this time we are already using a primitive cell but even if you are using a conventional cell there is a very neat utility that it will just automatically convert it to primitive cell and you will avoid any band folding effects but yeah so um, here if we come down then we see that it also shows us the special high symmetry k points which i also mentioned earlier so what are these 
special high symmetry k points actually so if you now come over to the band structure shown on the materials project database so here you see that this plot has some points on the x-axis so these gamma x w k gamma l u w all these points are called the high symmetry points uh, of the first Brillouin zone of your uh, reciprocal lattice and um, what you need is their coordinates so in this utility you already see that you have their coordinates in terms of the reciprocal lattice vector so the gamma point is always the origin so that is why it has the coordinate zero 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 and then um, k has the coordinates this and this and the reason why we need these coordinates is actually if you head over to your turbomol manual then you will see that in order to plot the band structure you need to provide an input that looks like this so what is this really doing here so let me now again explain this um, with the help of this band structure of silicon so basically it means that you will have four k point i mean in this example we are using four k point lines but for the silicon example over here you will notice that there are 11 high symmetry points so there is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and eleven so this k and u are at the same point so we'll consider them just as one so you have 11 points in total and then you have 10 lines that are joining those points so in our case this k point lines would actually be 10 and then we will specify the starting coordinate of each line as well as the end coordinate of each line in terms of the reciprocal lattice vectors and then this number indicates the sampling uh, that you are going to uh, consider so for example if we have 40 then that would mean that the line gamma to x would um, be approximated using 40 points so basically the program will calculate the value of the band at 40 points between these two gamma and x points so in our case the first point will have the coordinates 0 0 0 that is the gamma point then x as we saw in this utility was somewhere here so it is 0 0.5 0 0.5 so in our case the next term would be 0 0.5 0 0.5 and so on yeah so you now get the idea now the neat thing about this utility is that you don't need to worry about creating all this input by yourself but rather you automatically get all of the input required so you get the you know the atomic coordinates or rather the contents of the coord file that is required for turbomol and then you also get the lattice information over here so we have the lattice parameters and then we have the periodicity that is three as it is a bulk crystal and then you have the you know all the k point lines information that we will be needing so in total uh, we will have 10 k point lines so yeah so enough of you know introduction now let's start computing something okay so head over to your terminal and then again this tutorial assumes that you already have turbomol installed and you can like call the ripper or you know any other turbomol binary by just typing in that binary's name and you can also verify this by typing in which ripper and if it gives you an address that means that the computer knows um, where this binary resides in case this doesn't work then please check out my previous tutorials i show there how you can extend your environment path variable to include these um, addresses okay so enough of that so first of all i will be using the parallel version of ripper so i will specify the number of cores that will be used so i will specify that to be eight using this command export omp num threads equals eight and then um, this uh, directory currently um, contains just an energy calculation of the silicon but also i will now create a directory called bands because now I'll be uh, performing a band structure calculation. So I will create that and I will move into that directory and then I will create the coord file using nano. So I will create this and then I will simply come over here, control A, control plus C, copy it, control plus V, paste the contents. Then I will press control plus O to save it, enter, and then uh, control plus X to exit. Now, if I check out the um, contents of this directory, I see that there is a coord file there next i will create the control file so i will um, use the define utility so i will press uh, i will type in define press enter 
press enter again press enter again type in a space god to feed in to feed in the cartesian coordinates then i will also check if it worked or not by typing in disc enter okay looks fine then i will press star and hit enter and then no then i will specify the basis set to be def2 tzvp although for periodic systems it is rather recommended to use pop tzvp ref2 basis sets but in my previous tutorial i showed you guys that def2 tzvp work rather well for this system actually so i will do p all tf2 tzvp then bl to check if it worked or not okay it seems fine enter star enter eht to give the um, initial guess y molecular charge zero occupations okay y then dft so i will go into the dft sub menu um to tell it to use dft so i will type in on hit enter funk pbe so we'll be using the pbe function to reproduce the materials project band structure and we'll use a finer grid of m5 then i will press star hit enter and then move into the ri approximation menu i'm sorry not cdri just ri i don't know why i did cdri Okay, so, all right, then again, turn it on. Then uh, specify the auxiliary basis set to be universal. Press star, enter, press star, enter, press star, enter. And now I will check out my control file if it looks all right or not. So, okay, it has this DFT data group. Then it also has this RIJ group that indicates that we are performing um, a resolution of identity approximation. Then also we have the auxiliary basis set, basis set. Now I will open this control file again using nano and I will copy all of this stuff over here. So I will press control plus A, control C to copy it. And then I will paste it somewhere, let's say here. So right above DFT group. And I will press control plus V to paste it. Now I will just make one teeny tiny change. So Currently, it will just pro perform a band structure calculation using these, you know, k-point lines uh, coordinates. But also, initially, we require an SCF calculation to get the converged density matrices or whatnot, or bands rather. So, for that, we also need to provide a k-point sampling. So, what I'll do is I will um, come over here, and then I will hit enter, and then I will hit space, and then I will specify a k-point grid. And the keyword for that is nk points and then i will use an 8 by 8 by 8 grid so 8 sorry uh, 8 8 yeah okay so now i will press ctrl plus o to save it hit enter and yeah so now i think we are all set for this band structure calculation so now i will use the command no hup space ripper smp or maybe just ripper because it was already pointed to the a parallel version and then i will um, drive the output to the output file and then m percent so no hup is basically to uh, perform this um, calculation in background and then i will hit enter and then i will also use top uh, to monitor this process so okay ripper smp is running and it is currently using around four cores and now it is using all the eight cores that i specified it to use so now this calculation actually takes around, I think, one and a half minutes on uh, eight cores. And in the meantime, what I will tell you is how you are going to be able to plot such a, you know, diagram using matplotlib. So in my web app, actually, um, you know, this web app, if you click over here, then you uh, reach my GitHub repository for this app. So this is the repository. And now if you click over here, so that would be Ripper tools for Turbomo. And then you go ahead and click over here. So band plotting examples. And then if you come in here and then go to 3D SI example, and then here you will see this, you know, bands plotter RKS Python script that can be used to plot the bands. So you will click over there and then you will just go ahead and download this file in the meanwhile the calculation is running and you will say okay i will keep it on my device and then uh, you know create a directory on your computer somewhere and uh, i'll call it si and i will 
copy paste this you know python script from my downloads directory into this particular si directory okay and now i think the calculation probably has finished as you can see here so now let's check it out so i will open output file and i see that it took right about one and a half minutes and here we see something like this okay so we see that the band gap from the scf calculation is around 0 0.028 heart rates, which we saw in the previous tutorial was around 0 0.79 electron volts but that was just a vague guess from the scf the actual um, band gap we can get from this um you know band structure calculation and we see that okay ripper has plotted the bands in a file called bands and there have been 10 lines that have been plotted and the num total number of k points is 400 100. so remember that we used uh you know 40 k points um for each um k point line so that is why in total we have 400 points and um, yeah okay so the name of the file is bands.xyz and the format of the file is that the first column contains the um uh, coordinate of the uh, x coordinate of the uh, k point y coordinate z coordinate then you have the modulus k and then finally the energy okay so now if you do ls in this directory you will notice that there is um, this file band story xyz now what i'm going to do is i'm going to again copy this file over to the same directory where i have this python script so i will use winscp to copy this file from the cluster to my own computer so let me just refresh it so now we see this bands directory and i'll just go ahead and open the si directory on my desktop and copy paste this bands file okay so now if we first of all open this bands plotter python script then we see that there is still some stuff that we need to specify so first of all you need to specify the minimum and the maximum energy range for the plots now if you head over to this materials project band structure that we see that okay they use the same minus five to plus nine electron volt range so that is why um, we have that here and this is an electron volts as well and then there is a user provided energy shift in atomic units so this can actually be you know different depending on what you want so some people prefer to shift their uh, you know band structure plot by the fermi energy some people and then there you have different definitions for the fermi energy so for example here they define the fermi energy as the maximum of the occupied bands right so <clears throat> so they shift the whole band structure by this energy so in our case we can get this from our output file so i will open the output file again and i will obtain the highest occupied band energy from here so it is around um minus 0 0.191213 right so i will just go ahead and copy it and paste it over here and next um let me also check if this output file um is correct or not because uh i'm not sure what basis okay i used f2 tzvp so that should be fine all right so coming back so the next thing that you need to specify is the number of k points so that is 400 that is correct in for for a different system it could be different then another important thing is the k point labels so these labels are already for the silicon structure but for again for a different crystal system uh, with a different base group it would be completely different so here we have the names of the um, 11 high symmetry points so that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 same as here and then this is a bit tricky so then you also need to specify the you know the modulus k values of all these you know high symmetry points and how do you get that so essentially you open up this bands.xyz file in your text editor and then since we are using 40 points for each line so every 41st point you know after every 41st point you will get the modulus k value so the fourth column is for the modulus k value so i will go to so the uh, counting starts at two so i will go to i think 40 um 
um, 41st um, point actually, sorry. So yeah, sorry. So every 40th point um, would correspond to this value, I think. So let me just verify that. So if I go to 41, so I have here 0 0.595. And if I go to here, then okay, yeah. <clears throat> sorry, so 41st um, point in this XYZ file because, uh, you know, the first uh, index is for a heading. But yeah, so you get the idea, right? So anyway, so the first point is the gamma point. So that will, of course, start with zero. So that we obtain from the second line of this um, file. And then we go to the 41st line to obtain the next, you know, K point tick. And that is already here, but I will just show you the process. And then the next point we will obtain from the 82nd uh, point. So that would be here. So that would be 0 0.916 approximately. Or sorry, um, that would be 81st as well. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I'm making all sorts of mistakes right now. So yeah, sorry. So that would be 81 as well because you just add 40, not 41. I don't know why I keep going back to 41. So yeah, okay. So then you just copy paste this 0.908. And then similarly, the 121st point, so that would be 1.126 over here. So you will just go ahead and paste that here, right? So for this tutorial, I already have these points uh, ready, so I won't do it. But you will notice that once you reach the 400 uh, points, so if we go somewhere here, so 400 points, so we will use this Four zero first point in as the last point. So here three point nine one five, and then again three point nine one five here, and then you will see that again the plot starts from zero. So you will come back to zero, right? So that makes sense. And then you can also specify the title of the plot. So this is all that you need to specify for any material, and then you can just head over to your terminal. And essentially, what I'll do is I will come to my desktop. And I'll right click here and open this directory in my terminal. And then you also need to make sure that you already have pandas and the matplotlib uh, Python libraries installed. But um, yeah, so I will assume that you already have those and then you can just do Python and then the name of this uh, Python script that is bandsplotterrks.py and then if you hit enter, voila, you will get your band structure plot. Now let's go ahead and compare this with the materials project plot, okay? So let's compare the uh, um, the valence bands first of all. So okay, this pattern seems perfectly matching. Okay, then we have this, you know, this structure here. And then we have these features, a parabolic band here. Then again, this all actually really lines up very well with the materials project plot and then even in the conduction bands we have the same patterns so everything matches really well with the wasp calculation that was used uh, for the materials project band structure so it is actually amazing that you are able to just get that at uh, using the localized Gaussian basis function code such as turbo mode and now if we check out the band gap so let me just make it a bit bigger so let's now try to estimate the band gap from this plot. So I see that the maximum of the valence band is over here, and then the minimum of the conduction band is somewhere around here. And what do you see here? So here, if you look at the lower right corner of this window, actually, so if you look at the lower right corner of this window, then you see that I have a band gap of around like 0 0.64, 0 0.65, or somewhere around that if I move over my mouse over here. So here you see the value. So it's a, actually a pretty good estimate. So since we have shifted the, you know, the zero level of this plot to the maximum of the uh, valence band already. So this is actually a pretty good estimate over here. So yeah, I mean, not too bad. So I think that is it for this tutorial. So yeah, so in this tutorial, I've shown you guys how to calculate and plot the band structure of a bulk crystal such as silicon. And I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And if you have any questions or doubts, then you can leave them in the comment section down below. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.